morning, everyone. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you today? Great. Well, we are going to head off to the dog park and meet up with Ja. He spent the night at Pollyanna's house, so we're going to meet up over there. And I have a handful of things I want to do. I want to go to Pasadena today. I want to do a uh, filming location of Spinal Tap. And then I want to go to Home Depot because I went down last night to where one of Invader's um, tile pieces is. And uh, I was just kind of looking at it and I was like, you know what? I measured it all out and I go, I think I could just reproduce one of these with like whatever colors I want and then just hang that on the wall and then I don't have to take one of his and like it's all cemented in. I noticed that somebody had tried to, uh, has pulled up some of the tiles already. So I was like, I don't want to, um, you know, mess it up any more than it already is. And I, I wanted to get a photo before it gets any more messed up to where you can't um, reproduce it. So I went and got a really good photo. So I'm hoping to do that today. So Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Wow, take a look at that car. They're not here yet. I beat them. There they are. Okay, Sam just unleashed them. Let's see how long it takes from the time they're unleashed for him to work his way down here and realize I'm here. Here he comes. Let's see if he, see if he's figured it out. Ja! Hey, Ja! Ja! Ja, look who it is, Ja. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi, both of you. Who's excited? Um, what else is up? Party. Hey, guys. What is this, a lemon party? He and Pollyanna have been racing around for the last 20 minutes, so now they're just taking a break. She's hanging out right under here. Now he now he's gonna lay right there. I got a picture this morning of them laying together touching. All right, let's head out to Pasadena. Well, we've made it to Pasadena. Well, we've made it to our destination for today, Jensen's Raymond Theater. Now this has actually been in a couple of very well-known movies. One of the movies was Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction. This is where Butch, played by Bruce Willis, is supposed to throw the boxing event and doesn't. And this is where he ends up um, having to escape out the alleyway to uh, avoid being killed for uh, by all the bookies. But more importantly, what I think it's pretty cool to come by here and vlog it for is this is where they filmed most of the interior scenes for the concert performances. This is Spinal Tap. Now this is a movie that they claim created an entire genre. This was a um, a birth of what we call the mockumentary. A documentary that isn't really documenting anything real. This was the work of Rob Reiner and the genius men that performed in the band Spinal Tap. Harry Shearer, uh, Michael McKeon, and Christopher Guest. Now, how this all came about and why it's so fascinating is because Rob Reiner said that um, this was really kind of the first thing he did after All in the Family. Now, he said in those days, if you did television, you were looked at almost second class. So to try and move into the field of making movies, it was almost not impossible, but it was a hard, hard road. And he said it actually took four years between the time that he finished up All in the Family to do this. And he said how it came about was um, Christopher Guest and Michael McKeon used to do these British rock characters. And um, they used to improvise it all the time um, when they were just hanging out with friends or at parties. And they did a television show with Rob Reiner um, that was kind of a 
version of SCTV doing skits like that and that's where Spinal Tap started. They called the band in their Spinal Tap and they were known as um, England's loudest band. So he said, we always love these characters and at the time Michael and Christopher had made a short little like three minute demo reel of them being these characters. So he said, I, I started thinking up an idea about roadies and making them roadies, but then the Meatloaf movie with Alice Cooper came out about roadies, so we had to come up with a new approach. Now how they ended up doing this was that the members of the band all kind of pitched in, um, Harry Shearer, Christopher Guest, and Michael McKeon, along with Rob Reiner, they kind of put their money together and they decided to make a 20 minute kind of pilot of what they were gonna do because it was such a hard sell to anyone in the film industry because they're wanting to make a documentary about a band that doesn't exist that no one has ever heard of and the band is pretty bad and um, there's no script. So they said this was really the only way that they could get funding to do it. And uh, they said they turned it in and um, you know had to pitch it around because um, initially the people they shopped it to first didn't even like it. So they eventually got a couple of million dollars to make this movie and how they said they were gonna do it was they wanted to kind of base it off of um, The Last Waltz to an extent, where um, Rob Reiner would play the Martin Scorsese character, um, Marty DeBerge, and uh, he would put himself inside the documentary and basically film them going on a tour and uh, all these interviews along the way. Now he said when it was originally done, they had like a seven hour edit. <laughs> he said they had you know, four hours worth of just movie footage and then three hours of interviews, so they had to really chop it down from there, but it says a lot because if you've ever seen This Is Spinal Tap, you know how hilarious that movie is. All of that was improvised by the actors themselves. So they would have lit it up a little bit differently for each song, but this is where they would film um, primarily all of those live performances. Uh, Stonehenge, Big Bottom, um, what else, Hell Hole. This is uh, where they would have, we would have seen that scene where um, <laughs> Nigel Tufnell is doing his guitar solo and falls backwards and can't get up. The roadie has to come out and lift him up. And this is where we would have seen uh, Derek Smalls get trapped inside the pod. Um, backstage in here. Now it's not actually even a theater anymore. Um, I believe like about 10 years ago they gutted it and turned it into apartments just keeping the facade here. So um, yeah, there's no remnants of the uh, the concert space or anything like that but what they would do is they would light it a little differently so when you would see them um, you know rehearsing hellhole and different things like that sometimes they would pull the curtain up so you could see you know um, all the guts of the building and then in some cases you'd see it lit differently um, but this was this was where they filmed most of those scenes also on this stage is where they would have thought they were going to have a giant 18 foot version of Stonehenge and instead got an 18 inch one and their manager to, uh, to kind of like distract away from how small it was brought dwarves out and has them dancing around on stage and uh, God what a hilarious movie this is. This is also the band that would have brought us um, if you need that extra little boost you turn your amp up to 11. Most bands only have 10. But these guys, they had 11. And this is also backstage where you would have seen uh, Nigel Tufnell complaining about the size of the sandwiches, complaining that the bread was too small and that when you uh, tried to make a sandwich, there was too much overhang. And the manager would be saying, well, you know, if you fold it, he goes, and then he's folding the bread. He's like, yeah, but you have to fold everything. I mean, it was just the, the way that these guys improvised was ridiculously genius. And the movie has gone down as a huge success. It's, um, the band has actually reformed numerous times with m famous members. And one of the running gags to this was that the drummers would always die. So I love that part where the, uh, the guys are being interviewed and they say, oh yeah, people spontaneously combust all the time. The news just doesn't report it. Now I think one of the coolest things about this is that though the band is supposed to be pretty bad and, they're, and they even say in interviews now when they go out and do interviews as Spinal Tap, they say that this movie was a hatchet job, but <laughs> it's that what I love about it is that the music actually is good. I mean, if you take Big Bottom, that's a hilarious song. It's about like women with big bottoms and the lyrics are when he says, uh, <laughs> talk about mud flaps, my girl's got them. Big bottom drive me out of my mind. How can I leave this behind? Just absolutely genius. 
even though we can't go in and there wouldn't be anything to see anyway, we can uh, we can definitely look at the front. Looks like they're cleaning up a uh, pop-up museum they had here called the Pizza Experience. I didn't uh, I didn't make it out to that one. I am gonna walk around back because um, I'm pretty sure when they're practicing give me some money that you can see the back doors to this place out there and I'd like to go check that out. So here's the back of the building. You can't really see anything inside because the doors are all closed and everything, but they do have a sign back here that says this is called Electric Alley, named for the Pacific Electric Railway Company, the now vanished alley at mid block owned by Henry Huntington. The Pacific Electric System was the largest electric railway in the world covering Southern California with over 1,100 miles of track. By 1906, Pasadena was served by three Interurban routes of the Pacific Electric. Huh. So, this is all Electric Alley. This is Memorial Park. Pretty beautiful park. Now let's head to the Home Depot. One of the funny things that Rob Reiner said about the movie was that for one, a lot of people didn't know that it was a mockumentary or that it was a fake. They thought that was a real band for a long time. But he said it was funny how many actual musicians would come up to him for years following and tell him how many of those scenarios that they did in that movie made them laugh and also made them sad at the same time because they kind of lived them. So I'm hoping they have what I'm looking for in here, and I think they do, and I think it's a much better idea than going and ripping down Invader's artwork whole purpose of loving it there is so that everyone can enjoy it so now I can do my own favorite color scheme now he makes them in various sizes but I'm gonna do it one inch by one inch tiles looks like they don't necessarily have what I want here but I saw online they have it so I might have to order them I'm always kind of amazed when you ask a question the response you get I said do you guys have colored tile and I was in the section where they had one inch by one inch tile and they look at me dumbfounded and said define colored tile and I said um, like blue, red, orange, yellow. <laughs> Crazy. Well, unfortunately, it looks like we're out of luck here. One little spinal tap uh, note of trivia is that the actors, Harry Shearer, who played Derek Smalls, and uh, Michael McKeon, who played David St. Hubbins, um, they were actually in real life in a band together, and they used to open for John Denver, so they did have a musical history. Now, they also had... Um, <laughs> Now I know Michael McKeon as being um, Lenny from Laverne and Shirley, as of Len Lenny and Squiggy. Squiggy from that TV show was also in that band with those two, so kind of an odd little bit of history. Well I stopped off at the 99 cent store and got a couple of things. I got this, which is like the foam backing. I'm going to go ahead and put the tiles on there to make the actual artwork. I think I'm just going to buy the tiles online and have them mailed to my house and do it that way. And I got Jaw something too, check this out. I got you a new food bowl that says Wild Thing. What do you think, Wild Thing? Well, we're gonna head up and hang out with my friend Kevin, go up to the valley, and uh, I don't know, he was mentioning some sort of happy hour we might be going out to. He's going to. So Kevin is insisting I try some moonshine he made a few months ago. I have never actually had moonshine, so uh, he threw an ice cube in there, and I'm gonna do it now and see how I what I think. That is remarkably smooth. He told me it was the smoothest alcohol I would ever try, and it's 110 proof. Pretty pretty good actually. So my friend Sam Tripoli believes in conspiracy theories and has a conspiracy theory podcast, and he was saying. Isn't it weird how Super Dave Osborne, Mean Gene Okerlund, and the captain from Captain and Tennille all died at the age 76? Yeah, so that those are the friends I hang with. We're heading off to some sort of vegan happy hour. So this building right here, years ago, I used to have to come here every Saturday morning for my job when I worked at Jerry's Deli. This was called Solly's. And we had to like pick up bread and all that nonsense. But the significance is, this is where I met Mr. T. He came in for an early breakfast one day. I was in there joking with his buddy. And I looked over and I go, oh my god, that's B.A. 
We have competing scooter companies here in the valley. There's Razor and there's the Bird. There's the spy, so spy shop. <laughs> Was Bob Marley here? I guess this is our place. Well, I'm gonna get that and that. We'll compare this to the uh, sangria from Sevilla. This is the uh, buffalo style cauliflower. That is the mac and cheese and that is the butternut squash toast. So far the, uh, the toast is amazing. I loved the piece that I had. Well, that's it, Lionhearts. We're gonna call it a night. I wanna send a shout out to Kristen Fisher and thank you all for watching. If you haven't seen it in a while, go watch. This is Spinal Tap. I was talking to my friend Kevin tonight and I said, you know, we were walking by a musical instrument store and I looked over and saw a violin and I started laughing. And I said, that reminds me of the scene in the movie when Nigel Tufnell is playing his guitar, not with a bow, the way Jimmy Page did, but actually with the violin itself on the guitar. <laughs> it's hilarious, so. Yeah, if you haven't seen it in a while, go watch it. It's a really funny movie. Have a great night, everyone. We'll see you all tomorrow. Good night. <laughs>